Mm-mm. We're going to do Sade Martin right now. All right. Hello, hello, hello. I'm putting on short day morning. I can barely see. Hello, hello, hello. I could not put up a background in this. Let me see if I can share this to people. How y'all doing today? How's everybody doing? I cannot see how many people on this line, but let me go ahead on and share it. Just before I jump to what I need to talk about, how y'all doing tonight? I'm sorry for how I look. I am under the weather. I have. Hey, y'all. Hey, y'all. Hey, y'all. Do me a favor and share this live. I don't know how to go share this live. I jumped on to talk about healing journey. Healing journey. I won't be before you long. I won't be before you long. God, I ask that you cover this live in the name of Jesus. Let me share, share, share. And not die. Let me share the live with some people. I finally found the share buddy. Well, anywho, can y'all hear me over uh, what I'm watching? Encourage more viewers to share. Hey, Shay. Share the live. Share the live if y'all can. All right, let's get into it. Let's get into it. If you are new to my um, to my channel, I am Saved Bay, a.k.a. Tremaine Wynn. And what I do, I help women heal, be set free from toxic cycles, break sexual soul ties, and walk in their kingdom purpose. I have helped over 30,000 women break free from sexual soul ties, right? And now my next assignment is to help them break away from toxic relational cycles, demonic cycles. Uh, what I want to talk about tonight is nothing that I had planned because I'm under the weather, which is why y'all see me with a bonnet and a filter because y'all girl is doing pretty bad, pretty bad. The flu is... is it's fluid right so i posted a video on my page um i think it was yesterday and it was um with the song of me crying how many of y'all seen that song i mean seen the video and the reason why i posted the video was to give transparency of the healing process right because a lot of people um they block their healing journey away from people what has helped me in my ministry is my transparency with people right so long as i'm transparent with people i can continue to relate to you guys because we all go through seasons of transition we all go through seasons of healing we all go through seasons of pain we all go through seasons of happiness of joy of prospering seasons famine seasons judgment seasons you know what i'm saying um isolation seasons so right now i'm going through my healing um journey season and i felt like i had to post that video because somebody somewhere needs to know that healing is not always pretty healing can be very ugly healing can be very painful right and healing does not happen overnight healing is a um is a journey some days i'm up some days i'm down um, some days my emotions are under control. Some days my emotions are not under control. And uh, for everybody that's joining in, um, the purpose of me talking about the healing journey is because I am going. I have went through a divorce, right? So now I have written a book called The Cost of Marrying the Counterfeit, right? So I'm going through my healing process as I minister to women 
and coach women of how to get out of toxic demonic cycles that keep them meeting the same type of person over and over again in different bodies that is called a familiar spirit when you keep going through the same cycles when you keep meeting different people from different areas of life and if you get the same result over and over and over again that means that you're dealing with a pattern and where there is a pattern there is a curse right so that means now we have to look at self and take accountability to see what's inside of us that's broken that attracts these people right right so i posted a video with me crying and it was hard for me to post a video on my page because when you are are raised a certain way in certain religion in church right um i'm free from the spirit of religion now but i was raised in a religious home so i was i was raised in an environment that says that you shouldn't show uh, you shouldn't be transparent and open with people you shouldn't show people um the real struggle and i feel like if more christians show how they struggle or their daily ups and downs they wouldn't have so many people that's bound to this day because we have made going through trials and tribulations look good and it's really not good. We have made healing look like it's good and it's not, it don't always feel good. We have made uh, process look like it's, it's popping. You know what I'm saying? Like it's fun. It's amazing when it really is not. So I wanted to bring awareness that just because I get on this internet, God's internet, and I minister to women and I push you and I encourage you. And, you know, I, I tell you about my journey and I tell you things that God puts on my heart or I tell you things that I'm going through. I still want you to know that, yeah, my, my wigs be pretty and my makeup be cute. Right. And I be cute sometimes. But guess what? I also in them same times in that same week before I post a video, I could have cried my eyes out because I'm still healing from the fact that my my marriage is over. Right. That um, I'm transitioning into a new season of my life that I have to now um, allow God to lead me, allow God to walk me through this season, allow God to walk me through this pain, allow God to walk me through this anxiety, allow God to walk me through this depression, allow God to get me through to the next stage that he has for me and my purpose. So healing is not always pretty. Hey, nay. Healing is ugly. Healing is, I can give y'all a word and I'd be laying on the floor, uh, feeling like I'm about to die, snotting and crying and just not understanding. Healing is one day I can be good and, my, and I can be on point and my schedule can be amazing. I can get up and read my word and pray and listen to worship and, you know, just have a good day. And then the next day can just be as low as low and lower as it can be i can be i can get up and not feel like cleaning i can get up and not feel like talking to god i can get up and not feel like reading my bible i can get up and not feel like praying i could just want to sit in my in my sadness i can just sit and want to feel the emotions so healing is not always um a happy journey you know people some people get on they're like oh my god my healing journey no like your healing journey, it, it, it's like it breaks you, but it builds you at the same time. Hey, Nay and Ray. Hey. Lord, it's not. No, it's not, Andrew Mika. It's like it, it, it breaks you, but it builds you at the same time. It builds your endurance. It builds your character. It builds your integrity. It builds your spiritual uh, muscle. It builds like how you, now you look at things. Your discernment is stronger. You like. Like you looking at everything side eye because listen, I don't want to go through that pain, gruesome process that had me on the floor screaming and hollering, and nobody can help me but Jesus. I don't want to go through the pain of looking back over my life and looking at the deceit. You know what I'm saying? Like it's something about pain that will like stop you from going back into the same cycle you went into. So that that's the reason why I posted the video because I had a lot of inboxes about it. And everybody, everybody may not, hey, hey, Kiki, hey, everybody may not agree with that video I posted, but that was one of the videos that I made from my divorce blog. And some people may feel like, oh, you was trying to get attention. No, I was trying to show y'all that the healing process is not pretty. And you can literally be driving in your car to go pick up your children or go to your job or go to work. Okay, Blue Bonnet, 
has to go $5 or go to work and you can be crying your eyes out and then go and walk into work and put a smile on your face. You know what I'm saying? Like I can be in tears and then get up and get and get on and talk to y'all and give y'all a word. Like healing ain't pretty. It ain't nothing cute about it. I don't care how much makeup we got on or how our wigs look or how we slaying and, and praying. Healing ain't cute, but it's a process. And now I accept the process. Like today, I was proud of myself. Today, I haven't been in therapy since, well, what year? We, we in 2024. Imagine Brayden hand crying behind your client's back. This is a lot. That's a, that's a lot, sis. I haven't been in, in therapy for a couple of years. I just scheduled my first therapy session today. And not because something's wrong with me, but because I realized I can't dump my mess on my friends. Like life be lifing for everybody. So I can't just be venting with no solutions, be venting and crying with, with no end to it, right? I can't put that on people anymore so i decided you know what i'm gonna get therapy and i'm really going because i we have the holy ghost right so of course the holy ghost is your friend he's your helper he will show you things that you need to heal from he'll show you open doors but as as women of faith-based women we still need to get a therapist because i still need some coping mechanisms i still need some strategies i still need them to help me you know navigate through why why what what's keeping me stuck because even the Bible says seek counsel. Yeah, I have a therapist is my next step. Absolutely. I'm sorry, Sean. I'm spe I'm preaching to myself. I agree. Absolutely. So, therapy, the Holy Ghost, and Jesus is the, this is uh, that's me this season. That's what it's gonna be. I'm gonna keep getting on here. I'm gonna keep ministering to women. I'm gonna keep encouraging y'all. I'm gonna do the best that I can to walk. Y'all gonna walk with me through this journey. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to let you in to the in some of the intimate parts of my life, not all of it, but I'm going to allow you to see that if God can do it for me, if God can heal me, if God can restore me, you know what I'm saying? Like, he can do it for anybody because I wouldn't wish this pain on anybody. You know, I don't think God hates divorce because of you know uh, a lot of a lot of religious people like say oh god i hate divorce you can't leave your marriage i think god hates divorce because it wasn't what it does to our souls to our spirits to our heart it literally like breaks your heart it breaks your spirit it breaks your confidence it breaks a lot of things and i think that's why god hates it but i also think that he 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 definitely allowed it because everything is not in his will for us some things he he can see further than we can. We just see with our human eyes. We just see in the moment. We just see in the minute. We just see in the day. We just see in the hour of. We can't see six months ahead, a year ahead, two years ahead, ten years ahead. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes God will allow things to happen to free us. And we may not understand why we have to go through pain, why we have to let that person go why we can't why you not answer my prayers god what's wrong with me It's nothing wrong with you my friend told me yesterday and that resonated with my soul like that hit me so hard she said the devil use your marriage as a hit on your destiny i'm gonna say that again the devil use your marriage as a hit on your destiny I felt so offended and and so angry at the same time towards the devil. Like, you really did do this to me. Like, it's up. Like, I'm about to expose everything about you, Satan, because what you thought. Do you know how many relationships that hell sin and it be a, an attack on our destinies? And we be sitting there crying and snotting and not realizing that the devil really trying to take us out, really trying to throw us off our course. Let me let me tell y'all how the devil almost had me. Like, you know what? When I when I sit there and I talk to God, I usually be talking, I be arguing with God, but I be talking to God. And he like, you know how many women didn't get out of this? You know how many men uh women losing their minds? How many men losing their minds? How many people can't even go back to what they were, who they were. They lost their identity. They lost their self. 
They lost to depression. They lost to mental illness. They lost to suicide. Do you know how many women? So, of course, God is going to use this for his glory. And I'm glad about it because it's up. Like, I, I try my best to be transparent and obedient to God because I don't want to see women hurt. Enemy, friend, or foe, I don't want to see nobody in pain. I don't want to see nobody going through the same toxic cycles over and over again. I don't want to see you miss your purpose, miss your destiny because you keep repeating cycles with the same familiar spirit in a different body. That's serious. Think about it. How many times have you been in the same situation in different relationships and you like, what the hell is going on? And then the devil play on your self-esteem and make you think something wrong with you. Well, really, it's a spiritual attack on your life because you got purpose. You got people to help. You got souls to win for the kingdom. You got demons to cast out. You got people to pray for. You got to lay hands. You know what I'm saying? Like, you have a purpose. And I think the devil throw relationships at women because we're so emotional and we we're uh nurturers and we want to love and we want to have a family and we want to get married and we want to have children and live in this white picket fence and the devil play on that he'll play on that oh you this age you need to be married oh you this age you need to have children and social media makes stuff look so good but i don't cover nobody relationship because you don't know what's going on behind closed doors and half of the relationships we be in be idolatry because we be putting the man before God. But, you know, that's another topic for another day. Feel like I'm dating the same man repeatedly. Well, that's the cycle you're in. That's a familiar spirit that's hopping from man to man that you date. That's trying to keep you in a, a, a cycle of hurt, of pain, of emotional turmoil, of depression, of low self-esteem. That That's what that's for. The enemy hit women with relationships. The enemy hit men in their mind. If the enemy can have the they mind, he got the whole man. He got the whole man. He have the whole man. So I wrote a book called The Cost of Mirror and the Counterfeit. And in that, I I put the true story of Tracy and Robert, two people that got together that loved the Lord, but the the marriage was sent from the enemy. It was a hit on both their destinies. It was a hit on Tracy. It was a hit on her life, on her on her purpose. The devil tried to kill her in this marriage, still trying. Do you hear me? Still trying. Because let me tell you something. Just because you divorce don't mean that that spirit not going to try to get to you. Just because you divorce don't mean that that spirit not going to keep trying to come back, trying to come back, trying to renew covenant, trying to make a connection. They The devil don't go down fighting. You calling us out. What you being messy for? Listen, I'm calling me out. I'm calling me out. I'm calling me out, sis. That spirit will try. After, Don't think it's over with narcissistic women or men after the divorce. They going to try to come back some way, somehow. They go try to work their way back in some way, somehow. And they're not coming back to love you, to value, to honor you, to... To be with you. To see the value of you. They coming back to destroy you. They coming back to kill you. Not the person. Because the Bible said we fight not against flesh and blood. But against powers. Right? Against spirits. That's what we're fighting against. It's, never, it's not really the person. It's what they operate in. It's what they allow to overtake them. When I was praying today, I had to say, God, help me to separate the spirit from this man help me to understand that it is spiritual it is not the physical right because a lot of people are in agreement with stuff they don't even know so some of these people are so demonically oppressed they don't even have control over what they do do it make it right because the relationship over because oh we stopped talking or because a couple of months then went by these people go try to come back these people go try to pop back up in your life and every time they come back, it's going to get worse and worse and worse. And no matter how much you cry, kick and scream, when God say no, that's final. Take it from me. When God say no, that's final. Tracy ain't want to do that. Tracy wanted to pray. She wanted to believe. She wanted to trust God that she was going to restore and renew. But it's a difference between restoring. God will restore it and send them back, right? But 
you need God to work a miracle. And God is not going to work no miracle because he not he's not a genie in a... First of all, he's going to work all the miracles in the book that align with his will. But God is not a genie in a bottle that we can say, hey, I met this man and we got married and I just want you to fix it. You can't invite God in after the fact. You can't invite God into the relationship after the fact. Right? I don't even know why I'm going here. You can't invite invite God to a relationship after you just slept with them and fornicated with them and y'all done had a child and built a whole life together. Y'all ain't married. You can't invite God in after the fact and then think it's about to be easy because you didn't y'all didn't came into agreement with all types of demons getting together and not seeking God like y'all should have did the first time. Um Tiffany Buckner, they have a lady that I watch called Tiffany Buckner, and she said, Your your gift from God for your idolatry is a narcissist. Because if you really look at it, the same way that we allow a man or a woman to, with a, a, a spirit of narcissism, Jezebel, control, manipulation, things like that, to do us is how we end up doing God. We end up putting them on a pedestal, right? God will send you what you want. He'll He'll release to you what exactly what you want. And you think it because God released it or because God sent it back, that is his will. It's not. God wants you to learn the lesson. Tracy had had a year and a half to keep falling on her face to learn the same lesson over and over again. But the good thing about it is that she learned the spiritual realm. The good thing about it is that she learned how spirits operate, right? The good thing she learned about it is the next time around that this won't, this will never happen again because she'll test the spirits by the spirit. She will keep God in every decision that she makes, right? If you put God first in every decision you make concerning these people that you decide to talk to, you will not fail. Sometimes, you know, Tracy and Robert met, they fell in love and they thought love was enough and love was not enough because things be on the bloodline that you have no clue for. Some, 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 I, let me tell you something. Tracy was not equipped to fight the demonic spirits on her husband's bloodline. Do you hear me? She was not spiritually equipped yet to fight the amount of wicked, witchy, demonic spirits on that bloodline. But God allowed it for a reason. God may not orchestrate pain, but he allows it and he uses it. Right? He uses it. This morning... This morning, my friend said, Satan runs in cycles. God works in seasons. So if you're in a cycle, it's Satan, right? If you're in a seat, if you're in seasons, it's God. God is not going to send no man that's going to disrespect you. That's going to lie to you. That's going to play in your face. That's going to cheat on you numerous times. That's going to abandon you. That's going to, that's going to abandon you in the worst way, reject you in the worst way manipulate you control you bamboozle you use you abuse god is not that's not god will just off top off listen that that's not god will and to be honest we can't change nobody so if you somebody you own this live and you praying for god to change somebody you're going to be praying till you blue in the face because god give everybody free will no matter what they want to do no matter how much it may hurt god he give us all free will you can't change nobody you just got to let stuff go you got to heal and you got to let stuff go. And even though this healing journey is not fun, it's necessary. It's not the best, but it's necessary because I know I will never do this again. Because God told Tracy that she got into this with lack of knowledge and ignorance. Because it looked good. Because it felt good. Because it seemed good. The devil is cunning. You hear me? The devil will, the devil, the, it, it, they'll come in a form of God, but it's not God. Hey, sis, they'll come in a form uh, uh, as an angel of light, but they're not an angel. They'll come as the one, but they're not the one. All the prophetic people in Tracy and Robert's life and every pro prophet, pastor, apostle, evangelist told Tracy, God says no. He said, no, abort the mission, divorce, because God sees things that we can't. God sees that sees things that we can't. Now, some things can be restored, 
But what was going on in that, that right there couldn't be restored. And in order to find it out, you're going to have to click the link in my bio to read it. Come as a former godless, but still denying the power of God. Exactly. Now, let me tell you what I learned in the past 10 years of my life. Learning, uh, you know, giving my life to God, going to church. I realized that church is a spiritual hospital and everybody's sick. We all there for something. We all need something. We all need healing, right? And I, I, I'm realizing that you can have, looks don't matter. Looks don't matter. You can be dressed to the T, beautiful woman, long dressed to the floor, and you can be a whole witch in church. Look like a pastor, but it's a witch. And then you can meet somebody full of tattoos, and they'll pray you out your stuff right there on site. So I'm learning to never judge a book. I'm learning to test the spirit by the spirit. And most importantly, I'm looking at your fruit. Is your fruit rotten? Do you smell? Do you have a stench? Do you operate in the fullness of God? Do you operate in love? Or do you operate in your flesh? Book sure don't, yeah, look sure don't matter. It don't. A counter, let me tell you something. I, uh, this man prophesied to me on live the other day. And the counterfeit is like a, he was using a, an example of a $20 bill where it, the 20, the $20 bill looks exactly like the real one, the counterfeit will, right? And the only way that you can identify is to mark it, right? The only way you can identify a real bill, a real $20 bill is against a fake one is to mark it. So if it's not marked by God, if it's not covered in the blood of God, if it don't operate like God, but it sound like it's not God, it's fake. If it's not marked, if it don't have a mark, if it don't have a mark, if it don't have fruit, people that know that will catch it. People that don't, y'all catch it another day because it's marked. It's marked. God's people are marked. We're marked. We're chosen. You can see the God in us. You can see the pureness in us. You can see the fruit in us. Right? You can see the pureness in us. The genuineness in us. The loving heart in us. The giver in us. The love in You can see that in us. But if you're not looking with your eyes, if you if you falling for the deception, if you falling for love bombing, if you falling for, oh, they sound good. Oh, they do the, they do a nice Holy Ghost dance in church. Oh, they can speak in tongues. Demon can speak in tongues too. Demons can talk in tongues too. Everybody keep thinking that Satan was this ugly red person with horns. The Bible describes Satan as beautiful. So where did we get that analogy from? That Satan is just this ugly... This just ugly beast. The Bible described him as beautiful. Did y'all hear that? Beautiful. Jewels were beautiful on him. Beautiful. And we looking for Satan to be ugly, dusty, red with horns. You know what I'm saying? The whole time he's beautiful, handsome, immaculate. And just don't. And just because he got kicked out of heaven doesn't mean. He lost it. That part. He didn't lose his beauty. Because the word described him as beautiful. Beautiful lie. Okay? A beautiful lie. We be looking for witches. For witches to be. You're going to have to look it up. Because if I give it to you, sis, I'm going to be lying. You're going to have to look it up uh, when they de uh, when the Bible describes Satan. In, in the King James Version. Um, we be thinking that witches have long noses and uh you know uh warts and stuff all over them and but baby yo the the I, I seen some bad witches you hear me some bad slate from the hair down to the to the feet i didn't see some bad witches you understand dress to the t look better than the first lady look better than the than, than the head apostle so whenever Satan trying to trick us, if the exterior is a beautiful person, check that fruit for exactly. You can be pretty. We can be pretty. You can be pretty and still not have the spirit of the Lord operating in you. You can have a weak, your heart, your heart, 
your heart and your fruit will show your heart. If you listen, let me tell you, let me tell you what I learned now. When I'm around people, I'm quiet. Of course, I speak, I'm nice, I'm quiet, but I'm quiet because eventually the spirits that operate in people will reveal themselves. If you listen, if you if you ask God to heighten your discernment, I think a lot of us get into situations that we get in or relationships or marriages that we're not supposed to be in because we didn't sit there and test the spirit. We didn't sit there and listen. We looked with our eyes and our flesh and we got infatuated with this person and we got so excited about the love bombing and the, you know what I'm saying? All the good gestures, the kind gestures, the consistency, the fun, you know what I'm saying? And we never sat there and looked at their fruit, looked at their life, looked at their spirit, looked at their choices, looked at their decisions. Looked at the most important part, family. Blink, blink. The family will tell it all. I've been guilty of that, but thank God for healing therapy and God working on me. That part, I just, I just was telling them since that I, um, I just booked me a therapy session again. As I walk on this healing journey with God, with the Holy Spirit, I'm gonna walk. I'm gonna walk into that office and I'm gonna lay on that sofa and I'm gonna talk. And I'm going to let it all out. And I'm going to get me some coping mechanisms. And I'm going to get me some strategies. And I and whatever childhood trauma that I don't know about or anything that's unknown, I'm going to ask God to reveal it and uproot it so that my Christian therapist can point it out if I missed it. I ought to teach you a grand lesson, a blessing in the sky. That part, a very, very, very good lesson. Let me pause this right. I'm gonna teach you a grand lesson, a blessing in the sky. That part, a very, very, very good lesson. Let me pause this right. I had, I had to send this to my son. I've been guilty of it, but thank God for healing therapy and God working on me. All to teach you a grand. Let me tell you something. This was a hell of la 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 of a lesson. Wait, who preaching in the background? I'm listening to Sharde Martin. S h a r d e martin and she has a c uh cds on uh youtube uh prayer prayer intercession cds called uh the prayer vault and baby i put that on in this house even the kids know when i put that on it's time to go to bed but i listen to this on the way to work sometimes like her albums really really can free you like that's a powerful woman of god her prayers are amazing i think one of the videos i made on my tiktok page went viral i think when i was talking about the different spirits that operate in marriages against marriages i posted her uh i used her prayer song <coughs> and it went yeah she she heavy that let me tell you something that lady right there she she needs to be seated at the right hand and the right hand and the right hand and the right hand of the father because that's the intercessor of the lord right there She's the innocence of the Lord right there. So I definitely want you guys to, um, first of all, be set free from cycles if you're in it. Or if you know, if you have a sister, auntie, cousin, friend, daughter, you know, my 17 year old will be reading this book because I don't want any type of generational curse to come from this to keep for the enemy to keep her bound, to keep her in a toxic cycle. So I know that as her mother, that if I don't break it, is going to continue with her so whatever you don't break your children will have to deal with i don't know who that's for because honestly you know the devil really don't want us like he want us but he not as concerned about us he concerned about our children he concerned about the new, the, the younger generation that's who he want because he can use them the most <laughs> You know what I'm saying? We older. We over 30 and stuff. So, of course, you know, he, he can just throw a little stuff here and there and keep us in some stuff. But ultimately, he wants the children. He want them. He want to be able to use them, ruin them, stop them, stop the fullness of God from operating in them. Exactly. Children are the future. If you really think about it, I'm a police officer, right? So... The devil want the children because the children are acting a fool. The children are killing each other. Kids carrying gun, uh, you know, pew pews. They doing the most. You understand? Like the devil has a lot of the youth, and it it it, it was never like this before.
So if if you don't do nothing else, pray for your kids, pray for your neighbor kids. Like I was watching a live. No, I came across a, a TikTok, and it was a teacher. And you know, she had the teacher look, y'all. It looked like you know it would be. A, she would be an amazing teacher. But as I listen, some say just listen to her. She was saying she was talking about the power of prayer was her label. Let me tell y'all how these witches do. The power of prayer was her label on her uh, video. So I stopped to watch. I'm like, oh, she's a teacher. I might give her a follow. She cute. This lady opened her mouth and said, I can tell the parents that pray for their kids. Because when I'm doing spells at my desk and uh, shooting fiery darts at them, I can tell uh, some of my spells don't work on the kids that got prayed for. No matter how many darts I shoot at them, it don't work. When I heard that, I said, Lord Jesus, you doing what to the children? So even, let me tell you something, even cover you, cover everybody in prayer. Do you understand? Like everybody connected to you, cover them in prayer because they are, they are against the youth. My mentor had to teach me to come out of like a carnal based mindset because just like there are people of God that are assigned to different places there's the demonic kingdom have which is assigned to schools which is assigned to hospitals which is assigned to churches which is assigned to post offices which is assigned to public jobs which is assigned to fast food like think about that think about that Think and just sit there and think about it. Which is assigned to your job? Which is assigned to follow you to your job? You know what I'm saying? Like, I when she said that, it just my mind was just like I never thought about any type of evil hearted person working in a school educational system. But then is it actually makes sense because our youth and their minds are in the hand of educators so why wouldn't they send them there you know what i'm saying the hospital my my mentor was saying that he would go to the hospital to pray for people he said and some he would walk past some nurses and he he knew they was witches because they wouldn't like some of them would not allow him to pray for people in the hospital that's a red flag and i'm just like they really have you really gotta cover your 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 spouse your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your wife, your children, your cousins, your neighbors, your yard, your vehicles, in the name of Jesus. Like, you really got to cover them in the blood. You really got to pray them through. You really got to say, God, protect everyone around me. Cover them with the blood. We send every curse back to sender. Protect everybody. Any word curse spoken against me will fall to the ground and bear no fruit. You know what I'm saying? Like, you really got to pray Psalms 91 over your life. You really got to decree and declare some things to combat the enemy over your life. Do you understand me? But anyway, that's what I want to talk about. Healing journey. It's not pretty. It's ugly. <coughs> I'm in this bonnet because I'm under the weather. I'm sick. <coughs> but I just want to somebody to know. The live was popping earlier, but I'm about to get off. Um, healing ain't pretty. Some days you're going to be up. Some days you're going to be down. That does not mean that God is not with you. That does not mean that God doesn't see you, hear you. That just means that he, he, he's with you. Like, it's almost like you can feel his presence. Even when you crying and screaming, when you cry out to God, I dare you to turn some worship music on. When you get into an emotional state in your healing process and the devil putting like thoughts of the past to replay the, to trick you back into taking that moment in. Put you some worship music on, and the whole atmosphere go change. Some days you're going to be good, some days you're not. Some days you go miss them, some days you won't. But just keep getting up every morning. Keep keep decreeing and declaring that. Or keep thanking God. God, thank you for healing me. God, thank you for freeing me. God, thank you for saving me. God, I don't understand this. I don't like this, but I'm going to trust you through this. I'm going to trust that what you have is better. I trust that you're going to restore me, that you're going to renew me, God. I trust that I'll never go through this again, God. I trust that this curse will be broken so I won't even touch my children no more. It was meant for me to join this live. I was struggling with healing. Well, baby, welcome. Welcome. We all, let me tell you, healing can be a struggle. Healing can, it, it break you down all while building you up. 
That's how I look at it. Every, every Some lessons just come in pain, baby. And it's okay. Because how can we learn without pain? When we tell kids don't touch the hot stove and they touch it anyway, they have to touch it to learn. It have to hurt to teach you. And then they know, I ain't touching that no more because that right there, that's going to burn me. I'm glad I came across you and I picked up on the demon at my job. Well, you need to start praying. Yep, that's a whole list and all day by itself. Absolutely. But, you know, my family is home. So go grab the book in the link in the bio, Costumery and the Counterfeit. Um, I'll try to jump back on tonight. You guys have a good night.